Chronic pain is bad for both the body and for the mind. More than 76 million Americans deal with chronic pain every day. The new issue of Time Magazine looks at the latest advances in treating chronic pain. And here to help us understand some of those is medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashen. You have the highlights for us. That number, 76 million Americans, it's something that so many people can relate to. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit more about, about why it's such an issue. Well, first of all, the, the definition really of chronic pain, uh, Erica, is pain that continues outside of the normal healing period. And it can come from a variety of sources in our anatomy. It can come from muscles or joints. It can come from solid organs like your stomach or your uterus. Um, and it can be absolutely debilitating. And because you can't see it, you know, it's really so subjective, it can be very, very challenging to treat. So that's one of the hardest things for doctors if you go in and you say, I've had this pain. And we probably all experienced it. When someone say, where does it hurt? Describe it for me. Right. And, and everyone will give you a different answer. And about 80 percent of people who tell you they live with chronic pain don't say that they get good treatment for that. And part of the reason is there's no one test. There's no blood test. There's no scale that in medicine we use in this country to say, you know, this is objectively how much pain you're dealing with. So we really rely on the patient mm -hmm. and what they're saying. And as we know, everyone has a different pain tolerance and pain threshold. Right. There does seem to be, or over the last few years anyway, one of the main ways of treating it seems to be, though, with prescription drugs. Is it, what, 10 percent prescriptions have gone up for things like Vicodin and Oxycontin? That's right. So when you talk about about the class of medication known as opioid narcotics. We hear so much about it. The use and the prescriptions written for these types of medications has absolutely skyrocketed over the past. And there are a couple of issues with that, Erica. One, the biggest one from, from the way I see it in the medical community is that as physicians, we typically undertreat chronic pain dramatically. We're afraid of making the patient into an addict. We're afraid of making the patient dependent on this class mm -hmm. of medication, when in fact, the principle in treating chronic pain is to use the right dose of the medication that works. So I might think it's a high dose of narcotics, but if it works to relieve your pain, that's the appropriate dose. Now, the flip side of that, when you talk about opioid narcotics, is that absolutely, they can be habit forming. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about someone who's living with chronic pain, they might need to be on these medications indefinitely right. and the dependence becomes a real problem. So that's a major concern. But there are now uh, some alternative ways to treat this that are starting to be explored a little bit more. How, what are they and how effective are they? Well, you've probably heard of the term functional MRI. A lot of it has to do with the theory of brain mapping. So we know that there are pain centers in the brain and the brain releases certain chemicals. They're called neurotransmitters in response to pain. Part of the research is using functional MRIs to stimulate not just the pain centers, but the pleasure centers and retrain someone's brain to deal with pain. Then, of course, you talk about alternative ways of mm -hmm. treating it. Things like massage or acupuncture, yoga, certain types of exercise can be very, very helpful in conjunction with other things. All right. Well, it is, uh, it is good to hear there's some hope on the horizon, at least, and we can there look is. at maybe those combination therapies, as you mentioned. Exactly. Jen, thanks. You bet.